reason but God to worship you and so Lord we want to commit this service into your hands oh God we pray that father that you will touch somebody you will speak to somebody you will Lord transform somebody in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray that God that this service Lord shall be filled with the presence of God and the power of the Holy Ghost and that every works which are not of God shall be uprooted in the mighty name of Jesus Christ every spirit of the enemy every false powers of darkness that are hovering in the air around we cast you out now in the name of Jesus Christ we decree the presence of God in this place and the power of the Holy Ghost move O oh God in a special way Lord we commit those who are on their way who are coming that God you grant them journey mercies father the Lord as they get to this place Lord you will father bring them Lord with your grace and they will praise your name O oh Lord and we will thank you Jehovah God and those who are connecting Lord online we commit them Lord to before you that they will be part and parcel of this service as you speak Lord to each and everyone across the seas oh Lord in this land my father in different nations oh God that tonight from this altar thou God Lord shall minister in a special way unto the lives of your people we commit this service into your hands and we pray that God, that you will move, oh God. Move, Lord. Move in a special way, Lord. Touch us once more this day, Lord. Touch us once again, oh God, Lord, this day. Let the place, my Father, that we've gathered, Lord, to worship you in this tent, oh Lord. This tent shall be decreed, Lord, as the tent of prayer, the house of God, where people, Lord, shall run unto, and they will be saved. The people shall run unto, and they, Lord, Father, will receive their healing, their miracles in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to oh God we commit Lord father every session into your hands oh God the worship service oh Lord we commit Lord your servants oh God Lord as the word come let your word come with power Lord to speak Lord into our inner man in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we thank you and we bless you oh God as we commit this service into your hands in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, we Thank you, Jesus. You. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just lift your voice and worship God. Give the Lord the best worship this evening. He is worthy. He is worthy of all the glory. He is worthy of all the honor. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our worship. Our God is awesome. Our God is faithful. Our God is mighty. Our God is above all. Lord, we worship you. Tonight, God, we lift our voices, Lord. We lift our hearts and worship you, Father God. We worship you from deep down our hearts, God. Because, Lord, we, you are the only one that we can look unto, oh, Father God. We worship you, the ancient of days, Lord. Without you, we are nothing, God. We can't exist without you, Father God. You are our all in all. You are our everything, Lord God. You are all that we have. You are all that we want. You are all that we have ever needed, oh Lord God. You are all that our life can cling on to, oh Lord God, Father Lord. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. Yes, we worship you, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. We give you all the glory, Lord. You alone are worthy, Lord. Just open your mouth and bless the Lord. You alone are worthy, Lord. Blessed be thy holy name. Glorious is your name. Bow down and worship you, Lord. Glorious Jesus. Jesus. Above all powers. Above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you are he before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has 
the ground. You took the fall. You took the fall. And thought of me. And thought of me. of me that you took the fall that you took my fall you took my place you thought of me and you laid down your life for me you took my curse you took my place and died for me Lord Jesus how does it feel when you think about the love that Jesus loved us the love to the extent that he had to sacrifice his own life. You know, men promise that I will do, I can do anything for you. I can do, I can even die for you. But when time comes, they run away. When time comes, they, 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 they can say they don't know you. But the love of Christ, the love of Christ this evening, the love of Christ that has identified us, the love of Christ that he laid his, his life for us. Lord Jesus, we are grateful this evening, God. Just knowing that you did not live for yourself, but you live for us. And you live to die for us, Lord Jesus. That you just came to die for us. You left heaven. You left the throne. You left all the glories in heaven. You left all the beauties in heaven. And you came and died for the mere sins. Of, of, of all our sins, Lord God. That we are grateful. And that's why, Lord God, tonight we confess that all we want is you. That all we need is you. Because we can see the love that you demonstrated unto us on the cross. All I need is you, Lord. All I need is you, Lord. All I need is you, Jesus. All I need is you, Jesus. All I need is you, Jesus. All I want to be close is you, Lord Jesus. It's your presence, Lord. All I Is you Lord all I need is you is your presence all I need is you Lord is you Lord all I need is you is your presence all I
sanctuary that has a need of God this night. Desperately need God this night. Desperately need the hand of God tonight. Desperately need the presence of God tonight. If we are, I need you Lord. Oh bless me now my Savior. Lord I come Let's bring us ourselves closer to God tonight. As we sing this, this chorus. This. I need you all. I need you all. Heavy are I need you. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. He says he's wrapping his arms around you. He says he's wrapping his arms around you for protection. Thank you, Jesus. He's setting his arms around you to secure you. Thank you, Jesus. To secure your life. Thank you, Jesus. To secure all that he has given unto you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. He says that my arms are stretching to, I'm wrapping my, my heart around you. Thank you, Jesus. That nothing that concerns you will be destroyed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Father.
Father, we are grateful. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are grateful. We give Thank you glory, Father. Lord. We First Corinthians you. chapter one, chapter two. First Corinthians chapter two. We're reading from verse 3. It says, And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Hallelujah. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That I was with you in the weakness and fear and in much trembling. But even though I was with you in that weakness and fear and in trembling, I did not speak to you enticing words just to please your ears. But I spoke them about how the Spirit of God gave me utterance. That I was not to please you because it was not about the wisdom of men. Thank you, Jesus. It was about the spirit of God and the power that is in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And he says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Where is your faith? Thank you. How strong is your faith? Is your faith strong when you, 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 you trust in the wisdom of men? Or your faith strong when you speak by the Spirit of God? Thank you, Jesus. How is your faith? Where have you built your faith? Have you built on, on the wisdom of men? Have you built it to the things that can be seen? Have you built your faith to the mighty thing that you see that they are mighty? That's strong. That my faith, I can, I can, I can trust in this. I can put my faith in this. And he says, "How bad? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of the world, nor of the princes of this, of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in mystery, even in the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory." I want us to pray tonight. I want us to pray tonight that God, by His Spirit, will take us to the level that the wisdom of men will not matter in our lives. That we will not speak anything that we speak, we will not be speaking to please men. But let it come out with the power of the Holy Spirit to change the life of people. To change the hearts of men. Says verse 7, that but, we, but we speak the wisdom of God in mystery. In a mystery. How do you speak? How do people receive your speaking? Or are you a kind of people, a person that before you open your mouth, people say, oh, we know what you want to say. That we know, we know what you want to say. That is what you say always. That we, we speak in the wisdom. We speak in the mystery. I want you to open your mouth and say, Lord, fill my mouth with mysteries. Fill my mouth with the mystery. Fill me with the spirit. That when I speak, I will speak with the mysteries. That mystery that no one it will not get used to it in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to pray, brethren. Let us pray. This is a session of prayer. And I want us to pray that God. You know, even we, when we are praying, there are people who are fasting with the wisdom of men. There are people who are fasting with the wisdom of men. Why? They are just fasting. They are just starving themselves. They are not reading the word. They are not praying. They are fasting with the wisdom of men. And I want us to pray tonight that God will grant, will fill us with this, with this spirit. That we shall do things differently by the spirit of God. Everything that we do, we will not do it 
with the wisdom of men. We will not do it the way we understand them. But we will, we will do it by the mysterious ways of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. That all things we will do will, will be new every day in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the Holy Spirit help us. Let the Holy Spirit open our eyes that we may see the way God wants us to be. Where God wants us to be at this time. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray in Jesus' name that our faith will not be built on the wisdom of men, Lord God. That our words will not be spoken, Lord God, by the wisdom of men, Father God. Father, that you are filling us with the Spirit, oh Lord God. That when all of the words comes out of our mouth, oh Lord God, we'll be like a bullet, almighty God. My Father, speaking about you, speaking about your power, the power that changes life, the power that turns things around in the name of Jesus Christ that I'm going to be a gun that is loaded with the, with, with, with the bullets that whenever I release a bullet it will not miss in the name of Jesus Christ open your mouth and say Lord the bullet that you are loading me tonight with they will not miss in the name of Jesus Christ as I open my mouth to speak about your mysteries to speak about your power to speak about the love of Christ my bullet will never miss in Jesus name I will not miss my target in the name of Jesus Christ. The bullet that God is loading you with by the spirit, it will not miss. All the time it will cut the target in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And be very careful as you release this bullet. Don't release a bullet to a wrong target in the name of Jesus Christ. By the spirit of God, he will help us to aim at the right target in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you tonight, God. And just thank God for the grace that he has granted us. That we have been waiting upon him now. This is uh, the second week that we are waiting upon him. It's the grace of God. We cannot just do this alone. God has enabled us. God has granted us the grace. And those who have not joined, we pray. Pray that God give me the grace. That I may now join. I may join. I may join the army that is waiting upon you, Lord God, this month in Jesus' name. Just pray for the grace. Pray for the grace. And pray for the grace of God upon this land in Jesus' name. Well, Lord, we love you. And we give you praise. And we give you glory. For it's in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. We give glory to God. Give a mighty hand clap to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank God this afternoon. He has been so good to us. I thank God for bringing you over into this place to worship him. God bless you for coming. And I believe and my prayer is that as you have come, you will testify of your coming. Amen. As you have come, you will be blessed. And you will be blessed because you have come. Amen. And thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Diana. I can see Sister Diana in the house. God bless you. God bless you. You're welcome. We missed you. We missed you and we, we are glad that... You, uh, you have joined us. God bless you. I just want to give one uh, testimony. If you have a testimony, please. Let's have a testimony. Whoever has a testimony, a praise report of what the Lord has done. Praise God. No testimony. No praise report. I know we have them. But don't know where to start from. Hallelujah. Yeah, our God is good. And I look at things around us and I, I see the faithfulness of God. And I've, I look at how people receive things people receive reports and how people respond to reports but you know God says he has not given us the spirit of fear but he has given us the spirit of love the spirit of power the spirit of love and the spirit of the sound mind that in everything we will be walking in power 
and we'll be walking in love. And love is that power. When you walk in love, you walk with in power. And as you walk in that power, you walk with a sound mind. Not everything you have to criticize because there are something, there are some things if you see them, you look at them with a spiritual eye, you will see some sense in it. You know, I was, I was just listening to the president, how, what he said, and no, this may sparkle critics, but I looked at it in the, from the spiritual perspective. When he said, don't let COVID control your life. That you stand against it. You stand, you don't let it pin you down. You stand by faith. And you say, you're not going to pin me down. It takes faith. And says that this was a blessing from God. And I looked at it and said, oh. You know, sometimes we say, oh. Why is God doing this to me? Why did God do this to me? But the Bible says in all things, give thanks. In all things, we give thanks. I know. I, 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 you just, I think it's just God's opening your eyes and seeing and knowing the meaning of what God is doing. And we shall not be Derailed. Let our let our, our perception to ab, about God, our faith about God, not be derailed about with with other, what people are saying or what was going around us. Let us stay focused. Have faith in God that our God is more than able. Our God is a healer. Our God can protect us. Our God can take this thing away from us in the name of Jesus Christ. And I believe that God. By the end of this year, this thing will be history in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, uh, if there is no other, if there is no testimony, let's be reminded of our um, prayers that are ongoing. Uh, we, we still have our Monday home Bible study on Monday at 6 to 7. And on Tuesday, we have our prayer from 5 to 6. Wednesday, we have it here. Thursday, again, we have it from 5 to 6. And Friday, we made the pastor on the, hour, on the covenant hour of prayer at 6 to 7. And on Saturday, again, our prayer continues. We're going to do it from 6 to 7. Of on Saturday, yeah, seven to eight. So please, six to, seven. six to seven. So please let us be, let us connect to the prayer. Let us connect to the prayer. Let us be, let us be part and parcel of this prayer. This prayer is not for the pastors alone. This time is a time that God has given us, has given us the opportunity to seek the, to seek Him as an individual. So let us seek God. Let us seek God. Let us seek God. This time, take your, take your, 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 take your, your, your request to God. Take your request to God. Don't stay when we are meeting on Zoom. We can't see you. We can't see you on Facebook. And you want pastor to pray for you. Don't overburden the pastor. We have, we have been given the opportunity to pray. Pray. And pray and tell, let pastor pray together with you. Don't let the pastor pray for you. Let him pray together with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it's a good, it's a healthy activity to pray. It's a healthy spiritual practice to pray. Without a prayerful believer is a powerless believer. So let us stand up on our feet as we... As I call upon the man of God, yeah, to take us through the remaining session, Christ and God will bless us. Let's just put our hands together as welcome, senior pastor.
Praise the Lord. You're welcome, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. To God alone be all the glory. Let's just appreciate God tonight for bringing us again to his presence. Let's thank him for his spirit that is in the house. Let's appreciate him for the impact of his word and for the encounter we're about to have in the name of Jesus. Each time we appear before him, he strengthens us. He renews our strength. Let's appreciate him. He's worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for this privilege to appear before you. And I know that I will not leave this service the same way. Because I will encounter his word that will turn my world around. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's put our hands together and we take our seat tonight in his presence. Again, I welcome each and every one of us to our first midweek service for the month of October. And this month is a very unique month for us. The Lord has declared this month for you and I as I am a child of destiny. And this is our month of prayer and fasting for desperation, for destiny fulfillment. And I know that this month you will encounter God that will bring your destiny to fulfillment in the name of Jesus. So today being the seventh day of our prayer, of our fasting, you know seven represents perfection. And I know that the Lord will perfect everything that concerns you. In Jesus' mighty name. Let me give us an, assur the, an assurance to somebody that is in the house tonight. Or you are connected with us over the internet. And you have joined us in this fast. What the Lord is said to do. Why don't you join me as we open to the book of Mark 11. And we shall be reading from verse 23 to 26 and that is what the Lord is said to do for you and I even from based on this fast in the name of Jesus the Lord says and this that is Jesus speaking that for verily I say unto you that whatsoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he has he said shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he said, and that is what the Lord is saying. In this, as you commit to this prayer and fasting, whatever represents a mountain in your life, whatever represents an issue of long continuous, the Lord wants to use this period to excavate everything that has hindered you from fulfilling your destiny in the name of Jesus. And he said, if you now have the boldness to declare it in your mouth, that whatsoever 
you desire what is it that you desire when you pray believe that you shall receive them and you shall have them do you have a desire tonight is there something that you are desiring is there something that has been in your heart don't just leave it in your heart begin to declare it in your by your mouth believing in your heart that god has done it already is there somebody that is sick or are you praying for your loved one is there somebody that is under the weather is there somebody that has been under in terms of his finances in terms of his relationship the lord said whatsoever you desire what do you desire do you desire love in your marriage do you desire fellowship do you desire godly children today the prayer point for this today is for our children and i believe that you have prayed for your children that your children will be the, will have the excellency like in the order of daniel 10 times than their neighbors that that our children will be what will be for signs and for wonders that our children will not walk with friends that will stray them away from their destiny that you they will god will begin to open their eyes to begin to see visions and to begin to to to, to prophesy towards their future but how will all this thing be in verse 25 the lord says when you stand praying forgive if you add oath against any that your father your father in heaven may forgive you so the basis of answers to our prayer is on the basis of our willingness to let go and forgive others many people fast and pray but they don't see results why because they refuse to let go of previous wrongs they refuse to let go of what others have done let me tell you something people of god forgiveness is not is not is not easy to forgive but it is a must if you need to get your own blessing nobody is underplaying what that person did to you nobody is saying what he or she did was right but when it comes to the place of forgiveness and answers to prayer forgiveness is not negotiable if you want if you stand praying if you want to pray if you want your desire to to be met if you want god to speak to you you must be willing to forgive we say let go so that you can let god do his will in your life say so when you stand praying forgive if you have ought against any that your father may forgive you and in verse 26 but if you choose not to forgive neither with neither will your father forgive your trespasses i like you to just rise up on your feet right now and speak to the lord just speak to the lord right now is there any area of art is there issues of unforgiveness that you are dealing with i ask that you receive grace that this exercise this exercise of prayer and fasting might bring make million to you might bring restoration to you what is it that you are asking god for he said whatsoever you desire god is giving you a blank check god is giving you a blank check whatsoever but he's just requiring you to do just one thing he said when you pray to me make sure you have forgot forgiven everyone that has wronged you i pray for you everyone under the influence of my voice right now that you receive the grace 
to let go for God. That grace to forgive. Forgiveness is not about the person that has wronged you. It is about your relationship with God. It is about your fellowship with God. There is no fellowship you can have with God when you still hold back. If God could not withhold his son, but had to send him so that he can forgive you, how much more? What are you too, what is too difficult for you to let go, even for your relationship with God to be restored? Father, Lord, we thank you. I ask the Lord for your grace upon your people that they will let go and will allow you to do the perfect will. That as we seek you in prayer these 31 days, Lord, everything we seek, what everything we desire, Lord, we shall receive in the name of Jesus. Our faith is in place. Our obedience is in place. And we have chosen to let go so that you can take the glory. You can choose to, we have chosen to let go so that you can take the glory. Father, Lord, we thank you. There is no like you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Let's put our hands together as we invite our covenant mother to, to take us further with the word of God. Hallelujah. This song has been coming to my spirit. It says, what a friend we have in Jesus. I don't really know too much about the lyrics. I don't know if you can help me. I was trying to Google the song, but um, I don't know what's going on with my phone. My internet is not good, so don't depend on internet. Hallelujah. What a friend we have in Jesus Christ. If you know the song, please help me put it on. The Holy Spirit has been ministering to me for the past three days because of this song. He said, can I really have a friend in Jesus? All our sins and griefs to bear. If you don't know the song, just a privilege to carry.
Father, we thank you for who you are. Holy Spirit, we ask you tonight to forgive us all our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. Father, Father we are sorry for being so selfish. Father, we are so sorry for just we care less about the things of God. Father, we are so sorry for neglecting you, not recognizing your power and the awesomeness that is in you, Jesus Christ. Father, tonight we ask you, O oh Lord, to renew our strength, Father. Renew our mind as we're about to receive something different from you, Father. Give us new revelation, Holy Spirit. Open our heart, open our mind to be able to receive from you, Jesus. Like Pastor said earlier, he said, forgive because of our prayer. They are like abomination from God. Why? Because we've refused to forgive others. Father, we lay down every hurt, every pain every unforgiveness right now at the feet of Jesus Christ. Father, look down and have mercy on us tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless and we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Put your hands together. Wow, I have the biggest testimonies tonight. And to Diane is here. I am so happy. I want to give you a hug, big hug. But I'm going to give you a virtual, a virtual hug, right? So I'll just give it to you. I hope. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Big and tight. It is well with you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I really want to bless the name of the Lord for what God is doing. The Lord is looking into our hearts. He does not look at the circumstances. But the Bible says he searched deep into our hearts. Where is your heart? What do you think of others? And, and I thank God for this ministry in as much that we are all, all here together. Let's learn to forgive. So God can answer our prayers. Most of people are suffering from unforgiveness. And they will say, I've prayed, prayed. I am sick. God is not answering me. I am doing this. I've lost my job. I've lost everything. But have you really looked deep down inside of you? Have you really done what the Lord has you to do? Do your part and let him do his own part. When you do your part, you are giving God. You are telling Jesus, you are telling your father that, Father, I have done my part. Please do your part. And you are, the Bible says, bring me into remembrance of my word. Then that is when you'll be able to bring him and say, God, I've done what you asked me to do. I've searched, I've loved, I've forgiven, I've served you, and I'm still serving you. Please, Lord, do your own part. And that is why some people's prayers is just hanging. Some, God look down and have mercy on them. And I pray everyone will look down and have mercy on us tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, let's open our Bible. Tonight, it's our round table discussion. I'll try not to be the only one that will be speaking. So I want all of us to participate. 
and the word the Lord has given to me, it's something that we really have to talk about and it's things that it's happening these days. The month of October has been declared to be I am a child of destiny. For you to be, to be bold and boldly say that you are a child of destiny, you have to really recognize who you are first. So if you don't know who you are, you don't know who this God is because it's like a it's, it's like a cross. God, knowing who you are, then that will lead you to be, really open your eyes to really know that you are a child of destiny. Even if you have your destiny and you don't recognize the existence of your father, there's a possibility for you to miss the road that will take you to that destiny. Are you with me? You have to recognize the awesomeness of your father. Once you recognize the awesomeness of your father and you move down, you look around you, you say, yes, I know who I am in Christ Jesus. Then you take you, knowing who you are in Christ Jesus, we now give you that narrow, we lead you even to your destiny. Then when you now get to your destiny, you will look at yourself, yes, I am a child of destiny. But there's no way you can boldly say that if you don't recognize the awesomeness of your father. Knowing who this God is. So who is God? Some people say it's my father. Some people call, it my, call him my healer. Some people call him my savior. Some people call him, do we have his God? Oh, so many names. What he is to you is he is, he might be your God that gives you wisdom. So who is this God to you? I think he, he is a God that you have to have a personal relationship with. To God, who this God is to me might be different from how you what, what what experience you have with Him. The way He treats me might be the way the relationship I have with Him might be somehow different from the relationship you have with Him. When you have your Father, you know the power that's that he carries, you know who this father is, then the Bible says you shall, the righteous are bold like lion. And that is when you receive that boldness to be able to walk right in there and say, Father, I am here because I am your child and I know who you are. Praise the Lord. Let's briefly open our Bible to... Job chapter 38, verse 1. Job, Job, Job 38. Verse 1 to 11. So I will read one, verse 1, because I want us to participate. And you will read verse 2, and I will read 3, you will read verse 4. So that way, I want us to get this awesomeness, power of God. Are we there? Yes? We're going to verse 11. He said, Then the Lord answered Job out of the wild wind and said, verse 2, He said, Guard up now thy loins like a man. For I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Verse 4. Of earth, declare of earth. Verse 5 says, Who hath laid the measure thereof? He, if thou knowest, or who has stretched the line upon it. 6. Fasting on who laid the color. So when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, oh. 
of the womb. Verse 9 says, When I made the cloud the garment thereof, and thick darkness a swaddling bent for it. And verse 11. Yerato shall thou come, but no further that here shall thy proud waves and be stayed. This month I pray that everything that needs completeness, heaven will complete it in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that he has started in, our, in your life, every good thing that he has started in the life of your children, every good thing that he has started in the life of your family member, every good thing that he has started in your finances, every good thing that he has started in your career, every good thing that he has started in your business from January even to this moment. I pray that God Almighty will bring Bring everything completion in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, I am the one that created thee. And verse 9 says, when I made the cloud, the garment thereof. So he made the cloud. He controls the affairs of men. He does no wonder. He do whatever he wants to do at any time, however he wants it, and nobody can question him. Once you know the awesomeness, how powerful this man, this father that we are talking about, it makes it a lot easier for you and I to be able to, to speak it out that truly we are a child of destiny. But some of us we are so we are so en 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 we are so occupied with the things of the world. We are so occupied with things that will not help us. We are so occupied with distraction that the enemy has put into our hearts. And because of that, it's all we see is me, 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 and only me. We are not seeing anything that this God, some people now, they even put themselves together and they guess what they are saying. They say there's no God. Yesterday, I met somebody. I have been, I've been reading, I've been preparing for like, for this message for almost three weeks. But yesterday, somehow the Lord changed the message. Why I met somebody, I literally looked at me and said, you know, there was a song going on at the, at the, at the, at the shop. He stood there with his wife, looked around, looked around, looked around, and I said, oh, okay, do you need help? He said, no, you can't help me. And I said, oh, okay. You need me to give you anything? You need water? He said, no. Then he looked at me. Why are, you, why are you so kind? Why are you offering me water? Because now at this time he was sweating. So I figured in my head, maybe, you know, because the weather's hot, you know, she, he probably needs some water. Then he said to me, you are, those, you are one of those people that believe there's God somewhere. Wow. And I said, you don't believe in God? And he said to me, no, I don't. You've been brainwashed. There's no God nowhere. Hmm. At this point, he was getting agitated. You know, he started sweating more. Then I said, oh. I said, you, you are breathing though. He looked at me. Yeah, what does that have to do with God? And I said, look around. Let, let's go outside. So we went outside. And I said, he said, he said to me, don't, don't, tell me, don't tell me it's God somewhere. It's sky. You want to show me the sky? I said, yeah, isn't it beautiful? He said to me, what does that have to do with me telling you there's no God? <laughs> so, Thing I tried every time, everything I have not even said anything about Bible at all. At this point, people like that, you don't, you don't, you just want to use what you can see. 
to really see, to, to see, to bring them on board, to make them recognize that this, there's somebody somewhere. Now I asked him the last question and I asked, how, 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 who created you? My mom and my dad. Hmm. I said, who created your mom and your dad? And he said, it's the father and the grandfather. <laughs> Then I said, who created? He said, Kemi, you are going too far. I said, well, we need to know how, I mean, we, so now you agreed you are created by somebody, right? So we need to, I need to find out to take you all the way to where he all came from. I mean, he, he, if you don't say it's from father, mother, then grandfather, then they have great, great grandfather. They have great, 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 great father. So I started going like that, I started going like that. Started like, she said, he, he now said, okay, Kemi. I said, it looks like we really need to talk. There are some people out there now, they are, they, 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 been, they, they are, their mind is completely out of order. They, are, they have no vision, they have no purpose, they just want to wake up and make other people miserable because their lives are miserable. Because they carry negative energy, so they are looking for whom, where to dump it. And this is what the enemy is using to attack our children these days. They said they can't get hold of you, the dad, they can't touch you, the mom, guess what they do? They put it on social media and they are brainwashing all these kids. So now he came, it was both of the wife, the husband and the little girl. This girl, she's not little, she's about maybe 11 years old. And the girl looked at me, she said, I've been telling them there's God. They don't want to believe. Please let me talk to them. The girl was the one telling me this. Praise the Lord. The reason why I'm sharing this with us is because I told her, I said, because you don't have time, I said, maybe you need to tune in to our page on Wednesday. Definitely somebody's going to talk about this. We need to recognize the awesomeness power of God. We did not fall from heaven though. He created, he said, I have the whole world in my hands. He controls the affairs of men. No wonder, this is why we are going through all this. He shut the whole world down. He's proven to us that he has nothing to do with science. He has nothing to do with, if it was to be science, it would have found some solution to it, even from China. The whole world, even from my, that tiny village, where only 10 people live in that village, they recognize COVID. Not COVID, but the power of God, that this is true God, showing the whole world, I am in charge. He remains in charge. You like it, you don't like it. He has, there's nothing anybody can do about it. He shut the door, he shut it off. He opens it when he wants to. He has nothing to do. He humbles or he by he I was telling somebody, I said, maybe this is a way for God to humble our president. Yes, God called him. But he needs to, sometimes, sometimes God will allow things to happen for you to really recognize, I am in charge. He has nothing to do with anything else. No matter how smart you are, no matter how thick you are, you're so eloquent, he remains God. We, it's about time for us to recognize that somebody somewhere up there that controls the affairs of God. Some people say, well, I don't believe in Bible. Yes, you don't have to believe in Bible. But yes, I am telling you there's somebody somewhere that controls the affairs of men. You don't have to believe in anything else. But this man is there. Reference him so you can enjoy peace. People that don't reference God, they don't recognize him, they have no peace. He will draw peace from them. Because the sins that most of us committed. He looked around. He still, he's such a loving father. But he wants us to recognize that he is in charge. Let God be in charge in your life. Submit everything 
to him. If there's nothing else tonight that we, we want to talk about, let's all know that there's God somewhere and that we need to reference. Praise the Lord. Look at what happened to Pharaoh. Look at what happened to Herod. Hallelujah. Submit to him. Don't be, don't, don't, don't be those that just died. That, like I told him yesterday, I said, it looks like you are really confused. The little girl said, yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. And in my mind, I was wondering, how did this girl come to find out about God and the parents are completely out of it? What happened? So I, I, I was very curious. So I asked him, I said, my spirit is telling me you are not like this. What went wrong? What, when, when did all this start it? The man said, he said, Kimi, it, look, it, look, it looks like you really want to talk. I said, I, I, I am very interested. You're not going to preach to me. I said, I have not preached to you. I don't want to preach to you. I want to know what went wrong. And he said to me, you're not going to judge me. I said, I, why would I judge you? And you have not even told me, you haven't even mentioned anything about Bible right now. I said, because I don't want, you to, I don't want to confuse you the more. Because I have to know your level of understanding before we go to what I know. Praise the Lord. I said, but one, one thing I want you to know tonight, there is God. If I'm able to achieve that, then I'm okay. Then we can really talk. And he now said, well, I used to, I used to love God. I used to, I used to do this. I used to, then he began to open up. Brethren, don't allow people to dictate your destiny. Don't allow people to drag you to the pit of hell. If you see them be miserable, run, flee from them. And that was what happened to him. He did not flee. He sat down there among the sinners and he began to sin and be until he got himself in this mental state that he's so confused. He is so confused. This that was coming out of his mouth, I was looking like this. Wow! How could you? But one thing I thank God I was able to establish yesterday for him to know that is God. They hear you breathing. If you stop giving you oxygen, you'll be dead, brother. If you decide to say, you know what? For you, not recognizing me, I'll shut it up. Then he gave me a testimony. He said, I, I, I think what you, you, what you say, I think I saw God. You saw God? When? Well, somebody told me it doesn't exist. It's just my mind. Are you sure? Is this in my mind or there's God in existence? Praise the Lord. I'm sharing this because you will see people like this. And how do you, how do you undo them? How do you talk to them? Don't scare them away right away. Just establish that it's God. Let them begin to look. Let them use, use your life, use their life and use the, share your testimonies with them. Because you will see them and you will meet them. Until you, they recognize the awesomeness of God, they cannot be, they cannot be fulfilled. There will be that purpose will drain. Look at Esther. Let's briefly read the story of Esther. Let's 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 let's, let's read the story of the book of Esther briefly. Let me see. Esther chapter four, verse. Verse 5 to 16. The story of Hester. How she was able to help. Help Mordecai. It's a very funny story. But there was something there. That caught my attention. This evening. Verse 5 to 16. It said then Esther summoned her. One of the king. That assigned to attend to her. And ordered him to find out. What was troubling Mordecai at this time? Mordecai was troubled, basically. And asked why, why Mordecai was troubled. And so, Hot Hawk went out to Mordecai in the open scared of the city, in the front of the king's gate, very open. And he said, Mordecai, 
told him everything that had happened to him, including the exact amount of money that a man wanted to pay. And that had promised to pay into the royal treasury for the destruction of the Jews. Now, it's a only gossip. Are you, are you understanding it? it? Now, it becomes only gossip. The not, Mother Kai, this one, Mother Kai heard, but didn't know what to do. So, he now, he now has, he now has the other one, come on now, why are you worried? His action is making everybody to, to worry, like, why, why are you acting like this? But he was so scared to really relate to whatever it is that he heard. Hallelujah. Only gossip. And he said, and he said also gave him a copy of the text of the edit from the, um, um, but the, the a nation when it had been published, I mean published in Susa to show to Esther and explain it to her. And it's, he told him, instruct her to go into king's presence to beg for mercy and plead with him for her people. And verse 10, he said, then she instructed him to say to Mordecai, verse 11, all the king's officials and the people of the royal pro provinces, knowing that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king asks but one law, that they must be put to what? To death. Unless the king extend the gold scepter. So I, 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 I will rush down to verse 12. And he said, when Esther's word were reported to Mordecai, and he sent back this answer, don't, do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. A threatening message. And he said, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. Another threat. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time like this. God positioned you for something. When she went into the king's palace, she did not know when because now she's the princess, she's the queen, that this of this will happen. God appointed her because our God already seen ahead of what is going on. He said he already knew thee before you were formed. He has a plan for you. He has a plan for your destiny. So he already knew that, hey, if I don't put Esther there, the whole family, the whole generation will be perished. Hallelujah. So he allowed that thing to happen miraculously. Remember, Esther did not, did not even, didn't, she didn't know that she was going to be a queen. No. God favored Esther. And that was another, that's another story in, on its own. But where I'm, where I'm going is, wherever I met that man yesterday for a purpose. So when you find yourself in any situation, look at the positive things that's going to come out of it. Look for this positive energy. The first thing you ask yourself, God, why am I here? Why is this thing happening? What do you want me to do? Pay attention to God. Pay attention to Holy Spirit. Just don't jump and make any decision anyhow. Think through it before you speak like we said yesterday. Be, 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 uh, be, um, be, be, be slow to speak. Hallelujah. Don't just jump and make a decision based on what is going on. Guess what happened to her? Verse 16. It says, go, gather together all the Jews. And who are what? Everybody. This is what it says to me when it says, if I perish, I perish. What a determination. Knowing the power of, at that point you already knew. I, I know I'm not going to perish because I know my God got my back. He, she would not say that anyhow. Look at David. 
David knew I'm a little boy, but this head of this Goliath I'm going to bring him down. And to everybody else, they were looking at that small boy with something small, little tiny stone in his hand. What are you going to do? And Goliath, as big as he was, I, he looked and said, you. But in his mind, he knows the power of God that is backing him up. Until we recognize the awesomeness of God, it won't work for us. We need to start referencing him. And no wonder, the people, people they praise God, they, they have praise, uh, praise and worship attitude. No wonder their lives is totally different from those people that don't reference God. It's like before you come to my house, you're already telling me, oh, Kimmy, you are so beautiful. Kimmy, you are so nice. Kimmy, so my hair will start swelling. Like, I'm already, like, really happy. Like, so because I know when you are coming, I know that you're going to tell me how beautiful I am. You're going to tell me you love my dress. You're going to tell me. So in my head, I'm already calculating what am I going to do. So I know she's going to, she's going to hug me today. She, she already, same thing, that's how God God feels like when you praise him, when you reference him. His mind is already set. That's my child. That's my daughter. And that's my son. No, I know when he comes, he tells me how beautiful I am. He tells me I'm a great God. He tells me I'm a man of war. He tells me I'm a way maker. He tells me this. He tells me that. He tells me that man, where everything shuts down that I remain God. When things like that, you reference him and he's Come on now, when you, when you, when, as a parent, if your child is such child that comes to you early in the morning, and just, when I was, when I was young, that, no wonder my dad always loved me to sleep next to him. He will, he, he, he will make sure all the kids, all of us will come. My brother, we, so when you wake up in the morning, the first thing, the first way you go, you go snuggle yourself, make sure he prays for you. He just, he just wants to feel it. Because he knows, oh my kids, he will not get up until all of us, until somebody comes to say hi to him. Praise the Lord. And he will just go. But I'm telling you, we get into that habit to know who he is. Hallelujah. That same thing with God. Let him recognize your schedule. Give him a schedule that he knows. Give, let him, let him, let him, let him, let him know. Oh, oh, it's six o'clock. Oh, 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 oh. Sophie's going to call me at six o'clock. No, oh, oh, six thirty. I know, I know he's, she's going to be there. She's going to, see, now I, 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 I'm just, he's already waiting because he's already, he, he, he has, he has gotten used to you being the father and you being the true child. No wonder. Why won't you fulfill your destiny? Hallelujah. So, recognize, you will see these people you will meet, they are confused. But knowing the power of God and his might. So, what are you living for? Esther lived to save his people. Esther lived a life to make sure everyone around her is secured. Esther proved a point so that people so that the destiny of the people of his family of that nation is secured he, he was so determined are you determined to go all the way for christ tonight are you determined even when everybody is telling you there is no god how much god how much do you know of god how much can god say that's my child can he boldly tell you, tell somebody, the same way he was so boldly to tell Job and say, I mean, say, told Abraham uh, 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 and Satan, say, Job, you see, it's my son. Don't touch his soul, though. Everything else, you can, you can go ahead. The same way he's, can he be bold enough, be brag enough about you? Is your heart is completely, is it clean? Or are you wicked in the spirit? The Bible says the people that sin, they are wicked people. Are you wicked? When you still commit that tiny, small, little here, it means you are wicked. What does wickedness mean? It's not only when you do evil. Sin, right? Sin is being wicked. It, it, not necessarily only, only the time you commit sin. I mean, you do evil or... Any other definitions? 
What does being wicked? You can be wicked. Just come and sin. And that's what the Bible says. The people that commit sin. Let me tell you where it says it. They are wicked. He described them being wicked. So every time you commit sin, see yourself as being a wicked person. So stay away from sin. Let me show you where it says. Psalm 7, Psalm 7 verse 11. Yes. He said, God is angry with wicked every day. Psalm, the book of Psalm chapter 7 verse 11. Okay. He said, God judges the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. So every day you commit sins. And it says, and Proverbs chapter 29 verse 1 says that anyone who refuses to change in spite of the correction is still being wicked. They've corrected you. The, the Bible already told you don't do this. They've already said the ones that commit sins, the soul that commits sins must die. Praise the Lord. So all these things is telling you you are still continuing. So it means you are wicked. You are not being only wicked yourself. You are being wicked to your generations. Not only to your generation, to people around you. And the Bible says, he is so angry with wicked every day. So a sinner, God is angry with you. If you are a terrible sinner, he is angry with you. Try to recognize the power of God so you can enjoy peace that he has to offer. Let your heart be together with heaven. Stay away from sin. The wicked is anyone who continues to live in sin and disobedience. It says if you have never given your life to Christ, you've always say, okay, like that man. I don't know if he's, on, he's online tonight, if you, you're going to watch. If, you, if you've never given your life to Christ, or maybe you did it before, but our adventure, you fell short. There is God somewhere. He said, I am the God of all flesh. And is there anything too difficult for me to do? He said, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning. And the end. Recognize the awesomeness of God. Let's get if there's nothing else people can when you when when, when, when the people uh, people can say about you. Let them know you are a man of there. You are a man that recognizes the awesomeness of God. You are a woman of God. You are a woman that recognizes the power of God. Let people be able to say no. That one, even if you say if you do anything to her, she will still forgive you anyway. Whatever you do to him, he will still forgive you. Let people say something about you. Something good. That when God himself looked down, he will know, wow, that is my child. Praise the Lord. Make him be proud of you. Make God, make him, make him, make him, make him see you as somebody that he can say, wow. Don't touch him, it's so. But go ahead, whatever you want to do. Because I know I will multiply everything that the devil has taken away from you. That is kind of God that we serve. Sin makes you an enemy of God. James chapter 4 verse 4. Yield yourself completely to him. He makes you an enemy of God. Stay away from sin. Lie here and there. Little punch here and there. Let me quickly do it. Nobody, nobody sees me anyways. Hmm. He searches the deepest part of your heart. We don't have enough time. This is the end time. And we are all getting ready to make heaven. It's our fasting and prayer, praying month. 
take advantage of this season. Renew your allegiance with God every day. Fast, pray, confess your sin, and forgive. Three things you need to do that you need to get, get, keep doing it. Let people see that's part of your pattern and that's your schedule. Praise God. Know him. Repent. Forgive. And just let everything. Renew your alliance with him on a daily basis. Because the hour, the time is not known to anyone. So live. A life that this is the last breath. So when you go to sleep at night, have it at the back of your mind as I say, live a peaceful life. Like God, I'm going to sleep tonight. I don't know if that how I will come, but per adventure, cleanse me, oh Lord, and I've forgiven everybody that's offended me. Everybody, everyone, oh Lord, cleanse me. And I give my life back to you afresh. Then go back to sleep. If eventually you wake up good, some people will wake up and then so another another world. But you know you have peace with your maker. Bow down as we speak to God. Bow down your head and as, and speak to God. Listen, anything that is not right. The awesomeness of God that lead us to our destiny. The power of God that lead us to our purpose. Esther enjoyed the peace and the powerness of he, she recognized how powerful her God is. Brethren, recognize how awesome this God that we're talking about is. If there's anybody that you are still holding in your heart, God is giving you another chance to let that person go. They don't deserve to rent a space in your heart. Your heart is so expensive. You have a tight room. You don't have no more room for for, 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 for abominations. You don't have no more room for wicked people. You don't want to, to, make, to, 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 to sin again. You don't want none of them to drag you to, your, to, 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 to their mess. Forgive them. Let go. And let God occupy that space in your heart. Speak to God for forgiveness. Ask God, as a father, as I go, go with me. Renew my strength, renew my mind, renew my thoughts. Let all my thoughts, the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable unto you, Father. Father, we want to live a life, a sinful life. A, a, a sinless life that when we see sin, we will flee. Sin will flee from us. We will live a life that people will be able to recognize your power in us. Father, we want to make you proud. We want to make you a proud father. We want you to look down and say, that is my child. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless and we worship you. We know you are God of all flesh. We recognize your presence, Holy Spirit. Thank you for who you are. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. One more prayer point before I call on pastor. I want us to pray for our children. That little girl needed help needed clarifications. There's some people, they don't even know where to go, whom to run to. And you will be part, you will see, probably see one or two people. You probably meet one or two people. Or you probably have one or two in your family. I want you to pray for them. 
for their soul. The Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Almighty God will open their eyes to be able to see how awesome he is, our God is. Open your mouth and pray for those people. If you know their names, call their names. If you don't know their names, if they are in your family, if they are your co-worker, pray for them. The Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, visit them. Let God himself visit them. Let, let them have an encounter with Holy Spirit. Let them know that there's a friend in Jesus. The one that loves you so dearly. That the one that his love is not, is unconditional. The one that when he loves you, he loves you genuinely. The one that gives you to gives you good health. The one that gives you a, a, a sound mind. Pray for those people that God Almighty will visit them. They will have an encounter with Holy Spirit and show himself mighty even unto them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. We bless and we worship you. We give you all the praises. We give you all the adorations. Father, I commit this, your people, into your holy hand, Father. I know the world is wicked and we are living, this world is full of darkness. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, as we are the light, you say we are the light to these generations. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, let our light continue to shine, even in the midst of this darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ, for adventure we've missed it in one way or the other. Father, we ask you, O oh Lord, to forgive us, O oh Lord, so that we can be able to fulfill our destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, cover us, O oh Lord, in your blood and begin to watch over us. Don't leave us nor forsake us in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together one more time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. God bless you for the powerful word. Amen. Knowing God, amen. And we had that lesson in our home fellowship, knowing God and knowing that God is, amen. He is God and no one can replace him. And Father, we thank you for your servant. We bless your name because God, you've sent your word, Lord, at the right time. When the world is in turmoil, when everything is happening, Lord, contrary to your word, Father, we have come before you, Lord, to repent and to turn back to you on behalf of the nation and on behalf of your people. We pray that, God, your anointing upon your servant, Lord, shall continue, Lord, Father, to be refreshed every day and that we shall receive more and more from her in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is our giving time. It's time we want to worship the Lord with our tithes, our offering. And every time we come before the Lord, we want to be a blessing, not just to the ministry, but also to worship God with a sacrifice. Because God has blessed us and he has said that we need to come before him, before the altars, and give a sacrifice. I remember at Bethel when, when uh, Jacob had uh, had his dream and then he went and God blessed him. Jacob remembered to go back to Bethel and at Bethel, Jacob offered, uh, he built an altar and offered a sacrifice. And so we want to continue in that same obedience that we honor God, we come before him and we say, Father, I thank you because you've put a substance in my hand. Amen? Amen. And so if you are online, you can give through the cash app. It should be on your screen now. The dollar sign, Covenant Faith Family. Just uh, use cash app or use uh, PayPal. PayPal is paypal.me forward slash Covenant Faith Family. Or you can text by sending the amount to 559205. 7443. Amen. 
Amen. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the gift that you've blessed us with to come before you, even to give, O oh God. We give with gladness of hearts, O oh God. We give gladly because you are our giver and we cannot outgive you. So, Lord, we pray that may you receive, Lord, the offering. May you receive the seed, thanksgiving offering, Lord, from your children. Receive, Lord, the tithes, my Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you and we bless you, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And if you can have the basket to go around. And we are going to be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Let's have the basket go around. Even as we come to the end of our service. Our midweek service. Today was our day 7 of 31 days of prayer and fasting. Amen. I believe we are getting stronger and stronger. And it's getting better and better. Hallelujah. And so if you haven't joined, you are not late. You can still join right now. You can still join from tomorrow. And we will have now 21 days. Amen. You know, days are running too fast. I, I didn't realize we are on the seventh day. So tomorrow is day, day eight. Day eight, we're going to be praying from home. So join us on Facebook Live. Join us on Zoom. I will uh, share the Zoom link. So if you are on Zoom and you want to come online uh, and participate in the prayer uh, room, that will be even much better. Amen. And so we want to thank God for all of you who have been faithful and sacrificing even an hour or two or three or half day or the whole day in prayer. Amen. Amen. And so also let's remember on Friday to join our senior pastor at 6 p.m., on the covenant hour of prayer, Friday, 6 p.m. And so we want to just stand and uh, thank God. Just thank God for this special day. Thank God for who he is in your life. Thank God for the ministry, what he is doing in this place. Many things are happening in this place. Testimonies, God is visiting us in special ways. God has put a hedge of protection, an umbrella over our heads. He has covered us. He has protected us. He's doing great things in this place every single day. We have been preserved as, as uh, David says in Psalm 16. God has preserved us. He has been so kind to us. Even when we did not deserve it, God has been kind to us. And today we can stand here and say, indeed, the year 2020, it has been a difficult year for the world, but God has been kind to us and given us good health provided and brought us back to the ministry to, to, to the to the or to the sanctuary to come and worship him so we, we want to thank god because of his faithfulness because of preserving us because of being god the bible says in psalms 14 and verse 1 that in the hearts of fools they say there is no god but we know that there is god and because there is god we can approach his throne of grace boldly that we may obtain grace and find favor to help us in times of need. And Father God, we thank you, Lord, tonight. As we come to the end of this service, Lord, we can only say thank you. You've been so good and so gracious, my Father. And you say, Lord, unto Jacob, in the book of Isaiah 43, that you have called him your own. And Lord, tonight we thank you because you have called us your own. You say that I have called you and you are mine. Fear not, for I will be with you always. Even when you pass through the fire, it shall not consume you. Even when you go through the waters, you shall not be carried away. Because I will be with you. And that is what God is telling us tonight. That fear not as we leave this place. Fear not, for God has called you by name. Brother Albert, God has called you by name, Sister Diane. God has called you by name, Sister Faye. God has called you by name. Fear not as you leave this place. He said, I have called you mine. And that even when you pass through the fire, the fire may not, may not be quenched, but you will not be quenched. When you pass through the fire out there, the Bible says in Isaiah 43 that you shall not be consumed. And when you pass through the many waters, the Bible says that you shall not be 
carried away. You shall not drown in the many waters because God will be with you always. And so, Lord, we thank you and we bless your name. As we leave this place, my Father, we go by your grace. We pray the Lord that we shall remember, Lord, at the time of prayer, at the hour of prayer, we shall remember, Lord, to turn up in our different areas, in wherever we're going to be, Lord. We shall turn up, Lord, to give you thanks and to praise your name. I speak a blessing upon every family. Those who are sick, Lord, we proclaim their healing in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for Sister McQueena Wilson for preserving her life in that accident, O oh God. We thank you for that praise report because, God, you did it for her. And we pray for speedy recovery, for quick recovery in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father, for you are good. Receive all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. And now, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen, amen. May the grace